Pewaukee pottery is a mixture of two styles of pottery. Europeans and the indigenous Ottawa, Ottawa and Ojibwe people who are already in Detroit. The mixture of those two styles is Pewaukee pottery. Right. Stand next to Jamal. Now, what is this picture? Native Americans here, indigenous people. White folks, and this white woman and her two kids. That's Lady Marie Calice de Cadillac. Her arrival uh, less than a year after her husband founded Fort Pontchartrain du Détroit. So she comes months after him and lives inside the fort. Marie Calice de Cadillac. Remember, I said they were trading with the French, and they, they were coming to bring some furs, and one of the Frenchmen's dogs attacked one of the Ottawa, um, um, uh, Ojibwe, one of the Ojibwe, attacked one of the warriors who were coming in to trade. And one of the Frenchmen's they dog bit him, and he kicked the dog. I mean, that's what going to do. The dog like him. Kicked the dog, and uh, the Fr French soldier killed the Ojibwe uh, warrior for kicking the dog. Of course, that, that started a, a war between the Ojibwe and the French. They killed um, dozens of Ojibwe because of this. That was the No, this is just a, 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 there were numerous breakouts that we don't call wars today. That's really what they were between the, so, because in a trade relationship, it's always, the Europeans were always trying to get over. So they, sometimes the Native Americans would get mad. I, you may have heard of Pontiac's Rebellion. That was one of those, uh, one of those time periods when the, the indigenous people like, we, we, we going all in. And they killed a whole bunch of Europeans, but they lost Pontiac, not able to defeat uh, the British. In that case, the British he wasn't able to defeat them. But he killed a bunch of them. Did not enough. Not enough. Right. <laughs> and of course, he was in the, he was he ended up being killed himself by a fox uh, tribesman. They, they, they got him drunk and then killed him outside. Uh, so long. February this year.
Does it have your attention? Let's continue. One of the ways in which we forget our history is by sanitizing our language and pretending that these problems don't exist. We've always recognized that there were ghettos. The ghetto is, as he defines it, a neighborhood which is homogeneous and from which there are serious barriers to exit. That's the technical definition of a ghetto. Robert Weaver, the first African-American member of the cabinet appointed by President Johnson, as his Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, described any of the policies that this fellow describes today in a book he published in 1948 called The Negro Ghetto. The Kerner Commission referred to embarrassed to talk about it, and we need to confront our history, this is the professor, and stop sanitizing our language, and talk openly about what we've done as a nation, and what we need to do to undo it. He goes on, he goes on, and he says, it's a policy, well actually, let me do this, he says, and we can't talk openly if we're going to use 
euphemisms instead of being explicit about what the reality is. On how the New Deal's Public Works Administration led to the creation of segregated ghettos. Let me repeat this. On how the New Deal's Public Works Administration, the PWA, led to the creation of segregated ghettos, he says its policy was that public housing could be used only to house people of the same race as the neighborhood in which it was located. But in fact, most of the public housing that was built in the early years was built in integrated neighborhoods, which they raised and then built segregated public housing in those neighborhoods. So public housing created racial segregation where none existed before. That was one of the chief policies. Wow. And I thought we were supposed to celebrate FDR the progressives in the New Deal. On the Federal Housing Administration's overtly racist policies in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, he says the second policy, which was probably even more effective in segregating metropolitan areas, was the Federal Housing Administration, you've heard of the FHA, right? Which financed mass production builders of subdivisions starting in the 30s been going on into the 40s and 50s in which those mass production builders places like Levittown for example Nassau County New York and every metropolitan area in the country the FHA gave builders like Levitt concessionary loans through banks guaranteed loans at lower interest rates for banks and the developers can use to build these subdivisions on the condition that no homes in those subdivisions be sold to African Americans. Your ears should be ringing. This is New Deal progressive federal policy. In the ghetto, government policy, municipal policy, for example, denied adequate services, garbage wasn't collected frequently, African Americans were crowded into neighborhoods in the ghetto because so much other housing was closed to them as a result. Housing prices in ghettos were much higher than similar housing in white areas. Rents were much higher than similar housing in white areas because you had a smaller supply. It's the basic laws of supply and demand. So this created slum conditions. So when African Americans managed to break out of those slums and buy a home in a neighboring area, whites could be persuaded that slum conditions were going to be brought into their neighborhood. So the real estate agents at the time would go into these neighborhoods and try to panic white families into selling their homes cheap to the real estate agents. And they in turn would flip these homes to African Americans at a higher price. This was all started in the 30s under FDR and the New Deal. This was all started for the purpose of taking integrated inner city neighborhoods and creating segregation through federal spending and federal policies, federal bureaucracies and federal departments. This is the first I heard of this, and I read a hell of a lot, and I study a hell of a lot. Is it the first you've heard of this? Now this story is a week old. Has anybody else even discussed it? Has this been on television anywhere, on any cable program? You see, ladies and gentlemen, as we discuss often on this program, you and I, so much about...
came over and they were doing uh, fur trades with the Canadians, with ah. the French Canadians and stuff. But then you had the British coming off from like the south end, mm -hmm. you know, um, invading. But we were already here. Oh yeah. I mean, we had the we had the Berbers, you know, the merchants, the the, the traders here. We were already, already conducting here. business as we track here and on, trace the ancient mounds that we be researching. Right. They were here. These we're here. roads were here. They were just dirt roads. That's right. In the streets, Seneca. That's okay. right. Okay, all, all of these ancient indigenous American names. Yes. Okay, is for real Indian tribes. That's right. That were here. And we are the indigenous. Mm -hmm. You know, when we when grandma and them used to say, oh, it's fr uh, where you get that pretty hair from? Well, we got oh, Indian in our family. From the fruit. Inside the joke. The berry. That was an inside joke. But then when you really do your research and go back, we were the, the Indians, so we are the Indians. We're the only group and race and culture of people that names and change from mulatto, African-American, right. Afro-American, <laughs> Afro-Latino. I mean, you do Keep your research. Keep it around to confuse you. That's what they want to confuse us. And take us from the land. So if you can't associate a people with the land, you know, you, I mean, it's up for claims. You know, so Easy that's for them to take. Even for them to take. You know, so um, we have to get back to our indigenous roots mm -hmm. and, um, and do more research. And do more you research. Know, and it all comes back to you. It the will. The copper colored people. That's right. Okay, like they were called because that's what they were. And that's what we are. Not the five dollar Indians no. that they gave that status to, but right. the copper colored people. True story. Okay. True story. Facts. <laughs> and we were already here. Mm -hmm. Already here. <laughs> Are you think the Europeans came over here? Wherever we go, they gonna find. They go, and we're everywhere because we're a scattered people. Right, we're indigenous to all lands. That's right. So we were right here. So do your research on the uh, French and Indian War. That's right. Um, also, the War of 1812. That's right. And the Treaty of of uh, Paris. Ah. That's when the British. Spain and France, mm -hmm. and France. <laughs> crowns took over. Mm -hmm. And then it makes you question, what land are we on now under who crown? What crown? Whose crown? Mm -hmm. mm. Things to make you go, mm. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we got some history, some deep history. Yes. But as Paul said, follow the wheel. That's right. And it shall reveal. How can he be playing with us? Excuse me. Don't speak to us that way. It's not acceptable. No, stop it. Stop it right now. Step out. Step out. Then I don't want to hear from you. You don't speak to us like that. And this is the problem, the way you communicate. No, stop, stop. You need to stop. You need to stop, stop. Kipishchi. Mona can do anything to man in the mia. Asha wesh kat kitos chaman in the minan, kikis chakashkohono, a man in the miak. Tapishkoch eka in the new yak, a guan e spinnik, a guan makamosha go me to Tagosiak. Tapishkoch ekis chakakipa at the siak. You're a guest here, and you don't even know how to speak to us. You don't even recognize the tone in your voice and your delivery. And we're, and no, you're done. You're done. Next question. You better be respectful. We have a holistic genocide happening here. And I can speak for myself. You know what, white people? You've had your voice here for 524 years. 524 years you've been visible, white lady. You've been visible for 524 years. Look how fast your white man comes and steps up for you. 
Where, where is everybody else to come and step up for us? I have a right to my voice. I'm still fighting for my voice and my visibility. And I'm telling you, and I'm telling you right now, there has been 524 years of holistic genocide on Turtle Island. We're the ones that are dying. It's not you that is dying. And, and as far as how Justin Trudeau is doing, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is we're asking the United Nations to help us that charges of genocide, a war against humanity, war crimes, and the crime of aggression be laid because your Liberal Party was also responsible. Every party, your every governance that has been in power, there's been a war conflict of Indian Residential School, 60 Scoop, Indian Day School, and Millennium Scoop. None of your governments have clean hands. All your governments, all of your governments have blood on their hands. None of you are different. You haven't changed because you haven't started your healing journeys. The moment that we have our voice in our backbone, you, you want to shut us down. And you think you have, you're privileged to disrespect us. The moment we tell you because of your colonial mindset and your colonial way of being, your white privilege, your white fragility, you can't take our truth. Look how many people came to bat for you, white lady, and you're a guest here. Without us, you'd be homeless. This is over. And love cakes of raisins, so I bought her unto me for 15 pieces of silver, a half home or barley, and said, You shall not play the harlot, you shall sit solitary. Like man. that, like that, and you know it's like that. We gon' keep a coat and we gon' take our land back. We gon' keep a coat and we gon' take our land back. We gon' keep our coat and we gon' take our land back. Like that, like that, and you know it's like that. We gon' keep a coat and we gon' take our land back. We gon' keep our coat and we gon' take our land back. We gon' keep our code and we gon' take our land back like that.